Welcome to Beethoven at the Beach. I'm Christy Zeniga. And I'm Ann Nagoski. And we were originally scheduled to perform a concert for you featuring the music of Ludwig von Beethoven in celebration of his 250th birthday. The concert would also have featured the music of celebrated American composer Amy Beach. But due to the current circumstances, we will instead present a home concert featuring Beethoven, Beach, and a few short works by other composers. While it has been a true pleasure putting this program together for you, we wanted you to know how much we miss seeing the audience members and supporters of the Omaha Chamber Music Society, and we look forward to seeing you again live in the concert hall soon. Christy, Beethoven is looking really pale. Well, he is 250 years old. We are bookending our home concert today with two pieces by the famous Austrian violinist and composer, Fritz Kreisler. The two pieces are Sicilian and Rigadun in the style of Francoeur and Preludium and Allegro in the style of Pugnani. So these two pieces, along with quite a few other works, uh, are all written by Fritz Kreisler, but they are actually a part of a hoax Kreisler perpetrated on the classical music world many years ago. Uh, the details vary from story to story, but the way I understand it is that uh, Chrysler felt, as he was concertizing around the world, uh, that there was a lack of short, light pieces in the repertoire just for violin and piano. Uh, when he did recitals, there were always plenty of sonatas to play, but he felt that the world was missing some shorter works that could be uh, filled in between the larger works on these recitals. So to solve this problem, he composed them himself and quite a lot of them. But fearing that audiences would not respect the works that he had written, he attributed them all to rather obscure composers, the kind of composers no one knew much about and that there wasn't a lot of research uh, out about. And he played these works for many, many years to audience and critical acclaim. And it wasn't until 1935 that he finally revealed his deception to the world and the critics were rather upset that he told them these works were approved by you when you thought they were written by someone else. Why shouldn't they be approved by you when they are written by me? So with that, we will bring you Sicilian and Brigadoon in the style of Francoeur. Thank you. 
Beethoven's Romance in G, Opus 40, was originally written for violin and orchestra in 1802, the same year that he composed Moonlight Sonata, and shortly after he wrote his first symphony and his first set of string quartets. The romance follows a rondo format with the main theme alternating with other themes. One interesting thing to listen for are the double stops that Anne will be playing, and in, in essence, she's accompanying herself, and then we go back and forth uh, playing the theme. Please enjoy Romance by Beethoven.
Amy Beach lived from 1867 to 1944. She was a very famous American pianist and is also considered the first successful American female composer of large-scale classical music works. The Romance was composed by Amy Beach for the Women's Musical Congress in Chicago in 1893. She composed the piece especially for that occasion and premiered it with the celebrated American violinist Maude Powell, to whom she also dedicated the work. At the premiere, the two women performed the work and the audience cheered so much and so long that they had to repeat the performance as an encore. Christy and I will only play the piece once today. Please enjoy Amy Beach's Romance. Thank you. 
Chopin wrote Nocturne in C-sharp minor for solo piano in 1829 when he was 19 years old. He dedicated it to his older sister with a note saying, to my sister Ludwika as an exercise before beginning the study of my second concerto. Incidentally, Ludwika was with Chopin when he died and she fulfilled his deathbed request. She smuggled his heart from Paris to Warsaw where it was sealed in a pillar of the Holy Cross Church. This nocturne was published in 1870, 26 years after his death, and is sometimes called Reminiscence. This particular version that Anne and I will be playing was written for violin and piano by the Ukrainian-born American virtuoso violinist Nathan Milstein.
We will now present a short work by another famous American composer, William Bolcom, who was born in 1938. Over his illustrious career, he has won many awards, including a Pulitzer Prize, a National Medal of the Arts, a Grammy Award, and he was named the 2007 Composer of the Year by Musical America. In the early 1970s, Bolcom composed three ghost rags for solo piano, and in 1979, he arranged one of them, the graceful ghost rag, for violin and piano. Please enjoy this charming and quirky work, The Graceful Ghost Rag. Thank you. 
Franz Liszt is well known as a Hungarian composer, virtuoso pianist, conductor, teacher, organist, but was also a generous philanthropist. By his mid forties, he'd been so successful in music that he gave virtually all of his performing fees to charity. One example, in 1842, he gave concerts to raise aid for thousands who became homeless after the Great Fire of Hamburg. This next piece that we'll be playing, Consolation Number no. 3, is a part of a set of six solo piano works in the keys of D-flat or E major that Liszt composed. They were published in 1850 when Liszt was 39. This Consolation is in D-flat major and it was arranged for violin and piano by Nathan Milstein. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this home concert. 
Our final selection will be Fritz Chrysler's Preludium and Allegro in the style of Pugnani.